Hi, it's Dwyer. RichardDwyer.com, keeping it free. Blogspot.com. Let's talk about the current ID show on the death of Jeffrey Epstein. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now we know, just preliminarily, that the narrative that Jeffrey Epstein murdered himself, committed suicide, to protect significant people, people with power, people with status, people perhaps with connections to either the Oval Office in the past or the British royal family in the present, right? That narrative simply doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. We know that simply because when Jeffrey Epstein was accused of pedophilia in South Florida earlier, rather than hide, understand, he is involved with the Palm Beach society circuit the Palm Beach elite. There are photos of him at places like Mar-a-Lago, right? Very popular down there. Rather than hide, rather than do things privately, rather than fight the charges without making public appearances, without hiring high-profile attorneys, Jeffrey Epstein hired Roy Black, Understand, Roy Black is a very prominent attorney in Florida, right? People who watch court cases keep track of what Roy Black is doing. Also Dershowitz, excuse me, also Epstein hired Alan Dershowitz. Think about it. Dershowitz, of course, was a professor at Harvard Law School. If Epstein was trying to hide his ties to Harvard, where he was a significant donor, and according to reports, had use of an office at Harvard, then why would he hire arguably the most popular, the most known Harvard professor to be part of his legal team? So if Dershowitz was willing to fight criminal charges in South Florida, even though he was a member of the social circuit down there, and if he was willing to do so in a high-profile manner, at a time when, let's be real, he was worth at least several million dollars. He was already hobnobbing with former presidents of the United States members of the British royal family. If he fought the charges in Florida, why do we feel, why does anyone argue that Epstein was hesitant in any way to fight the charges in New York? The argument that Epstein kills himself to save powerful people, public humiliation and embarrassment just doesn't make sense given Epstein's history of fighting such charges in the past. Well, there are many problems with the Epstein situation, but what I want people to do here is to focus on Epstein's criminal attorney statements in the latest show on Epstein on ID Network, right? It is May the 30th. ID has a multi-part Epstein series on. The first show is tremendous. Now we'll get back to it, but let me just talk about what his criminal attorney had to say. Epstein hires this guy. He's a new hire. And the criminal attorney flatly says on the ID show that he believes that Epstein was murdered 
and that when he spoke with Epstein, Epstein was eager to defend himself. Eager. Right? Jeffrey Epstein wanted his day in court. Understand, people who were insiders in Jeffrey's circle, and understand, when you're an attorney, and what's said to you is protected by the attorney-client privilege, then there's no reason for Jeffrey Epstein to lie to you. You are an insider. In fact, what's said to you has legal immunity, some legal protections. Well, let me just say, you know, Epstein could have prevented the attorney from disclosing attorney-client communications to third parties. So let me just say that the fact that Epstein's attorney, and the show has a lot of bombshells on it, but the fact that Epstein's attorney flatly says that Epstein was eager to defend himself, and the fact that Epstein's attorney did not believe Epstein was depressed, Epstein was suicidal. The fact that Epstein's attorney believes that Epstein was murdered speaks volumes. For everything in the first episode of the current ID series on Jeffrey Epstein, the attorney's statements are the showstopper. Legally, this is a confidant of Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein was spending money on his defense at the time of his death. Let me also say, too, that everyone should be concerned about Jeffrey Epstein's death. One man's opinion here. The narrative doesn't make sense. I believe he was murdered. What I want people to do is to Google the findings of forensic pathologist Dr. Michael Bodden. Understand, this guy is one of the giants in the field. Now, critics will point out that Jeffrey Epstein's family hired him. My point to you is Dr. Biden, uh, Dr. Biden has a career that establishes his credibility. He's not going to ruin his reputation by falsifying a report to make some pedophile, someone who is socially repulsive, someone who, quite frankly, is unsympathetic, look like he was a murder victim. That narrative by itself is ridiculous. More importantly, the content, whatever your conclusions, and I understand some other pathologists saw it differently, but whatever your conclusions, the content of Dr. Bodden's report raises red flags. First of all, it is very rare in hangings for there to be broken bones. Very rare. That's a statement that you can verify for yourself online. But yet, not only does Jeffrey Epstein have a broken bone in his neck, folks, he has two fractures in his neck. Not one, but two. The fractures are more consistent with Jeffrey Epstein having been strangled than they are with Jeffrey Epstein hanging himself. Right, let's be clear about that. Let's go further. Jeffrey Epstein's eyes have hemorrhages in them. Here again, that is more consistent with 
Jeffrey Epstein having been strangled. Then with Jeffrey Epstein having committed suicide. Right? Epstein's condition. The two broken bones in his neck, too. And the eye hemorrhaging are more consistent with strangulation than with suicide. So then we look at the jail itself and understand this was a jail that housed high-profile defendants. The reason Jeffrey Epstein is in this particular jail is because it's supposed to have greater security than most. It's supposed to be better equipped to deal with the incarceration of high-profile defendants. Now, in furtherance of this jail security protocol, it had not one, but two cameras that were supposed to catch what was happening right outside Jeffrey Epstein's cell. Two cameras. Would it surprise you to learn that the day of Jeffrey Epstein's death, neither of the two cameras was working? How is that possible? Wasn't Jeffrey Epstein the kind of high-profile defendant who apparently had Bill Clinton on his plane hung out with Prince Andrew, gave a lot of money to Harvard, had been represented by some of the best lawyers in the country in the past. Right? A guy with a lot of money who you would imagine prison authorities would worry about being sued if something untoward happened to him. Right? According to reports at the time of his death, Jeffrey Epstein was a billionaire. Now we can argue about it. Let's just say he's comfortably worth at least millions of dollars. You're telling me that two cameras failed to work the day of his death? How could you have two cameras outside his cell and yet we not have any footage? of what happened outside his cell. Well, it gets worse than that. In furtherance of the prison's security protocol, not one, but two guards were supposed to be checking on Jeffrey Epstein. Two. Would it surprise you that they're claiming to have fell asleep Would it surprise you to know that with a multi-millionaire slash billionaire defendant who apparently knew, traveled with past presidents, knew Donald Trump, the current president, apparently these guards did not check on that defendant for more than three hours. Think about it. On the day of his death. It's even worse than that. Is this negligence or malfeasance? Is this sloppiness or is this something a little bit more intentional? Well, understand these two prison guards got suspended. Then, of course, it was found that they had falsified records. Right? They were charged with conspiracy and record falsification. Didn't all of us know about 
Jeffrey Epstein's incarceration at the time of his incarceration. Wasn't he one of the most well-known people in the prison system? Wasn't he a big fish? Weren't the allegations outrageous? Weren't you looking forward to that trial? Given that Epstein had already had some elite lawyers represent him in the past and since his earlier sentence was really a slap on the wrist for the kinds of crimes that he was accused of. Right? Epstein, according to ID Network, gets less than two years. Only has to serve something like 13 months. So given that Epstein got off lightly for terrible crimes, and you'll find out how terrible when you watch the ID show, which has tapes of police interviews with some of Epstein's victims. Given that Epstein really beat the system in Florida, weren't you looking forward to whatever arguments his lawyers were going to make in New York? Well, understand, with this high profile, a defendant Somehow, the defendant ends up with injuries more consistent with strangulation than suicide. And, of course, the protocol of the prison wasn't followed. Right outside his cell, the video cameras are broken. The multiple people, two guys who are supposed to look after him, conveniently are asleep. Right? The records, they're falsified. Well, let's talk about the ID show, and it's a must-watch. Right, The first episode is what I've watched so far. It's one of the best I've seen. On the show, they have some important people. I've already discussed the lawyer. For me, that's the showstopper. But there's also the CEO of Tower Financial. An outfit at which Epstein worked for a long time. Now the CEO on camera on the Epstein show, and keep in mind this guy was sentenced to prison for financial irregularities at Tower Financial. On camera he admits that there were financial irregularities at Tower Financial. On camera he says Jeffrey Epstein, whose past is as murky as could be, was involved in the financial irregularities, which of course involved millions of dollars. Right? The feds want you to believe that Tower Financial was a Ponzi scheme. Think Bertie Madoff. Right? So, on ID... They have a high-ranking official who worked with Jeffrey Epstein at Tower Financial tell you that Jeffrey Epstein had dirty hands, that Jeffrey Epstein and his business practices, at least at Tower Financial, cut corners on deals worth millions of dollars. Right? They also have on the show the co-author who wrote a book with James Patterson, the well-known author. That's probably the best book on Jeffrey Epstein. And of course, this co-author who studied Epstein, who's outraged at the plea agreement offered Epstein, tells you how shocked he was by the plea deal that Epstein reached. Right talks about the number of victims. Folks, it's not one or two, it's dozens. It's dozens in South Florida and how the prosecution for some reason with several of these women 
cooperating. The prosecution somehow didn't use them. And the witness they used, the victim of Jeffrey Epstein they used, they used poorly. It was the prosecution in front of the grand jury who asked an underage victim about her sex life and things like that. Sex life that didn't involve Jeffrey Epstein. Right, the state of Florida did not properly represent, in the opinion of James Patterson's co-author, Jeffrey Epstein's victims in its criminal prosecution of pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. Let me also say too, that the tapes of the victims, and understand, some of these victims did not want to talk. They came to police attention by chance. One girl gets into an argument with a classmate in high school. The classmate calls her a prostitute. Some school official then looks in her purse, finds $300 in the purse. They ask her, how did you get this $300, right? She's just a high school student. They ask her, were you selling drugs? How'd you get this money? She then talks about how a friend invited her to go to a rich man's place. How she shows up at the rich man's place and how she's then talked into giving the rich man a massage. Right? In walks Jeffrey Epstein, wearing just a towel. For purposes of decency online, on the internet, I'm not going to continue with what else happened in the story. But just understand, it's graphic. Just understand that it's clear from the tapes that they play, the police interview tapes that they play on the ID show, that these women were dealing with a pedophile who knew how to groom them, who bided his time and waited for the right opportunity to violate them who made sure that things sounded innocent on the front end, right? I'd like a massage. And then, of course, got graphic on the back end, right? Understand, too, this was Jeffrey Epstein's M.O. The Florida police inspected his garbage. They grabbed garbage bags. They took him to the police station, then they started looking through the garbage bags. And then the garbage bags were notes of arrangements involving Jeffrey Epstein and underaged girls. Right? Epstein's clearly a pedophile. Now understand, charged with pedophilia, which is different than tax evasion, right? Someone might plead guilty to some crime that doesn't carry heavy social stigma, just to put it behind them. But pedophilia is not the kind of crime that someone's going to plead to if they didn't do it. Right? It carries too much of a social stigma. It has the people around you trying to protect their children from you. Right? It's the kind of thing that's going to kill many business deals. The people with whom you have a business relationship might decide, you know what, it's socially too damning for me to do business with a pedophile. Right? Understand, Jeffrey Epstein fought the charges, in my opinion, in a high-profile way. 
I don't know how you can hire Alan Dershowitz in a low profile way. Right? Someone who has represented OJ is not someone you can hire in a low profile way. Right? Jeffrey Epstein defended himself aggressively in South Florida. There's no reason in my mind to think that he wasn't prepared to do so in New York. Let me also say, too, on the ID show, and this person's very significant as well, is Jeffrey Epstein's prison buddy. A guy who was in prison with Epstein in New York City, right, the high-profile defendant prison, for tax evasion and running an escort service. Right, a sex trade business. So the guy befriends Jeffrey Epstein. He talks to Epstein about what it takes to, you know, deal with prison life. Right? Epstein's titillated by the fact that this guy was in the sex trade business. The guy flatly says on the show, just like Epstein's lawyer, that Epstein was not suicidal. Epstein is not depressed. Right? Epstein was coping with prison life. He's not depressed. So his death is curious. Right? Understand, too. Let's say Epstein killed himself. What are the odds that he would kill himself? And then, of course, the autopsy would find that a guy who hangs himself off of a bedpost somehow is able to break two bones in his neck, have hemorrhaging around his eyes, consistent with strangulation, and then, of course, the prison would have not one but two cameras malfunctioning, and, of course, the guards, the other failsafe, wouldn't check on him for three hours, then would decide to falsify records. This looks like a murder to me. In the comment section of this video, give us your thoughts, especially if you believe it's a suicide. Tell us why. Right? I do hope you're more creative than claiming that Epstein was publicly humiliated. Guys, this, this guy was a pedophile for years. He's a pedophile out in the open to the point where he has different people procuring girls for him. Right? This guy, to me, has no shame. You're telling me suddenly he grows a conscious at 66 years of age and decides, oh, I can't go on. The social embarrassment, the fact that some of the people around me might be embarrassed, folks. This guy was in the jet set for years. He was throwing parties for years, both in the United States as well as on his islands. Right? Keep in mind, he has multiple locations. He spends millions on the real estate he owns, and it's all designed to throw parties, to invite people over, to be near Central Park, etc. So let me hear from you. The ID series is on and it's excellent. The people they get are jaw-dropping. The police interview tapes they play are jaw-dropping. I believe it's definitely worth a watch. My question to you is, how could Epstein's own attorney... First, why is Epstein hiring an attorney if he's about to kill himself? Right? And how could Epstein's own criminal defense attorney reach the conclusion that Epstein was eager to defend himself right before Epstein decides to kill himself? Supposedly. 
Let me know what you think in the comment section. I look forward to reading your comments. Thanks for stopping by.